This is a review I have sat on, not knowing quite what to say or how to express my thoughts on this film, as it's a challenging one to break down, talk about, and let alone rate. It is saying something quite deep and profound, I believe, and I'm not sure I agree with every conclusion it comes to, but it also doesn't definitively answer anything either. What I want to discuss first is the way in which the camera communicates feeling. There's long tracking shots that really emphasize racing thoughts, tension mounting in awkward situations, and the general feeling that life goes on, even if we don't have time to process everything. One of my favorite uses is of a simple, stationary, old-fashioned tripod wide shot. And these moments of literal stillness are more stirring than any movement. They communicate the loneliness of the characters, the weirdness of the situation, the regret of what's obvious but not said, and the pain of being forced to confront a literal past life and how to properly heal and move on from the idea of what could have been. It's powerful messaging through the use of cinematic language that I will lament on for some time, and most will. Everyone can relate to these themes and it will make you think about you what feels like a past life. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend nor expect every film to conform to my worldview, but I also won't conform right back. What I can do is chew the meat, spit out the bones, and engage intellectually with what's being presented. Now I'm a firm believer in the sanctity of marriage, and as a Christian man, there are firm boundaries in my life that are left with a strange disregard in this story that I found to be a bit un unbelievable. So some mild spoilers will follow. The husband of the story, Arthur, has his own insecurities about his marriage and whether or not he deserves his wife, or if she truly loves him. She seems to even question it herself at various points, through some gazes and some cuts that are just left hanging. I think this is raw, real, and heavy stuff to deal with. The honesty in their dialogue is refreshing and a bit fourth wall breaking, but it reaches a point of absurdity in him feeling comfortable enough with all the alone time Nora spends with Hayson. This isn't an issue of whether he should let her, control her, trust her, or if she's an adult. I get all that, I get all that. But there's a conversation around appropriateness that Nora explicitly avoids, and I think that's part of the point, but how it's handled stretched to beyond what I found believable. And as a husband, I would never be okay with that situation and not at least address it a little bit more head on. Now everybody's different. Besides the alone time, not being able to understand the borderline emotional cheating going on when they speak in Korean right in front of our Arthur is just, uh, I don't know, man. Like there's helping your spouse heal and there is allowing things that hurt you for the sake of the other person in a way that's not healthy. And this really dances around that. A little bit. But I will say Arthur's struggles are very real, very understandable, and maybe because of his insecurities, he makes the decisions differently from me that I would do in this story. But the respect I have for the writing of his character is that he's clearly struggling to trust his wife, with good reason, but in spite of it all, even in the weird situations, when he's right there, he chooses to give her the benefit of the doubt when he probably shouldn't, and let her work through it and grieve and trust her. Ultimately, Nora stands by her husband his faith rewarded. She commits to him when she had every opportunity not to. She acknowledges what could have been, but how unrealistic, naive, and foolish she was for thinking so, and how that was clearly then, and this is clearly now. Infidelity lingers over the entire movie, and that character skirt the line, but works through it as a couple, and Sung is always respectful, but says what he feels he needs to to finally let go. Now, that can be considered disrespectful, and I'd have a problem with it if he's talking to my wife, and it honestly is, but we can understand why he does anyway, and based on how Nora handled their relationship and their past life, <laughs> you can tell that he's doing his best to honor them, yet find closure. And he does. That final shot of him driving along, moving along. Still, Nora also makes decisions that are questionable. And then in that longing look in each other's eyes, showing the uncomfortable nature of the confronting the one who got away, the one who maybe it could have worked out in another time, the one who we were close with so long ago that it almost seems like that aforementioned past life. The ideology of the Inyun reinforces the idea of a connection, but the film doesn't go too hard into this, but if you think about it, it also gives Arthur far more credit in the story as marriage is so vital in that belief system. And it helps Sung to finally move on, showcasing the somewhat abrupt ending scene choice of him driving along that I mentioned. Nora's bursting into tears can be read, I feel like, in a multitude of ways. The director has said that it's her grieving the little girl she never truly got to be after having to immigrate twice, not knowing what could have been. And I like the intention of this interpretation as she goes into the arms of her loving husband for comfort. The one who stood by her, the one who gave her the benefit of the doubt and chose trust when he had every reason to question what was going on. 
And even though she doesn't ultimately want Sung, she did for a long time. There is a longing there. It's, she spent years with unresolved feelings and arguably some trauma from all of it while never properly addressing what was unsaid. She did want him, and that want reared itself, but she confronted it head on, and there are tears that come with that in life and grieving that and processing it. It's hard stuff. And the film is brilliant in what it's saying. Sung's journey is heartbreaking, his desperation palpable. Sometimes it moves a little too slow for my taste, but it always addresses tough situations with elegance, even if it doesn't go as far with certain discussions I think it could have. And maybe it lacks some oomph in dissecting all the iffy things happening, but man, when it hits, it hits hard, but in a subtle way, in a way that will leave you reeling with contemplative emotion and nostalgia. Growing up is hard. Letting go is hard. Marriage is difficult. Sometimes we're forced to confront things that aren't easy, and we don't handle it perfectly, but with marriage you do it together. This is what the film is trying to say, and I think it's wonderful for communicating that so effectively with nuanced performances, and it dives into a subject a lot of us think about, but never really have to encounter. It's a mostly well thought out script, deep somatic messaging, and a really smart editing. All around a fantastic directorial debut for Celine Song. This is a tough one to rate, honestly, but I'm going to leave on the higher end of positive. So I give Past Lives 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for watching. Hit like, consider subscribing, and remember, always look for the good.